let's review what we learned about B trees so far. So we learned that B trees are essentially AB trees. Uh, but one, one thing that we can tweak here is that um, we can have different branching parameters for the internal nodes and, uh, and the leaves. So typically we would think of them as being the same, but later on we're going to set them to different values. But basically assume that we have a branching parameter B for internal nodes, which means that all the uh, nodes have degree between 1 over 4B, or like B over 4 and B. And all the leaves have between K and K over 4 elements. Okay. Typically, we can think of K and B or both being the same and being, let's say, equal to B. But later on, we're going to set them to different values. And these are basically what we have learned so far. One problem with B trees is that they're not very useful for building dynamic data structures. Basically, the, the issue is that every time you need to do insertion or every time you need to do a deletion, you really have to go to the block that contains the element and modify it, which means that you need to read at least one IO, one block, and you have to write at least one block. Okay, there, You cannot be better than one IO, essentially, per update. This means that you cannot do sorting by insertion. Whereas in internal array, we can do the following. Imagine I have n elements. I could insert them one by one into a binary search tree. Since the insertion time is log n, in total that will take me n log n time. And once uh, all the elements are inserted in a binary search tree, I could do an in order traversal in linear time and get the sorted order out of it. If we try to simulate the same thing in the I model, you will get a capital N times a log N algorithm, which is very suboptimal. In fact, it's missing a factor B, which, as we know, is very big. But we'd like to fix this issue, and we'd like to build a data structure that has even a faster update time. Of course, how can we... Uh, first, in some sense, you cannot beat one IO per update, right? Because if you want to do less than one IO, it means that you can't even modify the disk. So it seems impossible. Um, but what we're going to do is actually to do amortization, which means that sometimes we're going to modify the disk, but not always. And if you probably heard about the concept of buffering, that's what we're going to use. And that basically brings us to the buffer tree. So we like every update to take roughly this many IOs such that we can do n updates in a total of this much time, which is basically the sort time. Okay. I will overview um, buffer tree technique here, and then in the later videos we're going to look at the details. So the basic idea is the following, that we attach buffers to every node. So a buffer is essentially, um, we can think of it as a region of the disk where we write unprocessed uh, updates. Let me give an example to make this easier to understand. Let's say you have this root element, or as a root node, and we have a continuous stream of updates coming into this tree. Okay, so we have um, my, so we have, let's say, update 1, update 2, update 3, etc. And for the moment, let's just assume that they're all insertions. Typically, what we do is that, given one update, we traverse the tree, modify some disk, and maybe split them, and so on. Then we go to the next update, we modify the tree, and so on. Here, we're not going to do that. The idea here is that we keep all these updates in the internal memory. This means that all these updates, U1, oops, you want you to all the way stay in the internal memory without being processed. Okay? Of course, we can do some basic operations on them. So for example, if um, if you have a bunch of updates and then a search comes, you can of course go through the internal memory and see whether the, one of the recently inserted element is the element you're looking for. But typically just um, these buffers, these elements sit in the buffer, which is in the internal memory. But of course, we cannot keep all the updates in the internal memory. At some point, we might run out of memory. In that case, what we do is that we will process them. So the rough idea is the following. 
if I can annotate. The graph right is following. Um, once this buffer is full, the root will pass them to their children. Okay, so the root will buffer a whole bunch of um, updates in the memory. So these are updates that we have not processed, right? We have just kept them in the internal memory. Once we have too many of them, we'll figure out what to do with them. Let's say they're insertions, right? We'll figure out that some of these updates need to be inserted in that node, some of them need to be inserted in that node, and etc. And let's say these insertions need to be inserted in that node. What we do next is put these elements in the buffer of that node. And so these elements will be written in the buffer of that node, which is you know part of the disk. It's on the disk. But this operation is now kind of cheap, right? Because if I write B updates that need to go to that element, I can use one IOS to write to pass B updates to that node. Okay. And then we continue doing this. Okay, of course there are gonna be some details that we have to look at. But basically this way we can achieve sub one IO per update. Let me explain how that is possible and then we'll see how we will do it. Um, okay. So imagine that I have B updates in the root. And let's say just for the sake of this argument, all of these B updates need to go to this child. After the buffer of the root is full, I use one IO to pass all of these B updates to this child. And then let's say this buffer is full, and then uh, I need to process the buffer of that node. And let's just say for the sake of argument, the same B elements then need to go to the buffer of that node. They happen to be inserted to the left. Then I spend one more IO to pass it to that node. Let's, for the sake of argument, that the that all these buffers, they travel all the way to be inserted over there. Okay. The, then I have spent one IO per level of the tree, which is log. But I have managed to process B updates. So this means that if we divide the number of updates, if we divide the IOs, number of IOs, by the number of elements that we have processed, we have actually managed to achieve an IO complexity of 1 over B times this log factor. Yeah, some log factor. We're going to look at the details in the next videos to see how we can do something like this.